Cook is running six. Hello and welcome back to the Signature Spellbomb YouTube channel. If you want to support us, please visit any of these sites. I've got up on screen now. Now let's get right into it. Today I'm going to be talking about the new Ren in 7 Shadows over Innistrad Planeswalker card and how it may fit into Oathbreaker. This is going to be a slightly different video from how I usually do things since I just didn't really like the previous format. So let's start out with the war. I do like to know the background of my Planeswalkers so I can build around them and better understand who they are as a character. I have nothing. I have nothing at all. I have no idea who this guy is. There is no lore. The only lore we have is this guy Gundam suits trees to walk around and fight in and it looks like he's got a different tree each time there is some throw up throw away card stuff that says that he's awakening these trees it says you know when he awakens number seven he actually talks to it but in the lore for the shadows over in set there's not really a main mention of him as a character and just to be sure when i read the three chapters that have currently been released of the story i went ahead and did an Control F and search the whole page for, you know, his name. He wasn't on it. I don't see how he actually fits into the set. Maybe more will be, be revealed in the second Innistrad set this year. Now let's talk about him as a card. For uh, three and two green, he's a five loyalty planeswalker. In green, it's not hard to play him at that. Uh, he is a little bit more expensive, so he's not going to be one of those planeswalkers you get right out of the gate. His plus one is to look at the top couple cards of your library, uh, reveal old land cards among them, and put them in your hand. That goes real well with his next ability, which is a zero loyalty ability. You just put all the lands in your hand uh, into the battlefield. His minus three is to create a green tree folk token that has power to this each equal to the number of lands you control, which is amazing. That token can be huge, it will defend him, and it'll allow you to keep your planeswalker out longer. And his minus eight is to return all permanents from your graveyard to your hand, and you get an emblem that says you have no maximum hand size. Now that kind of last ability is very similar to ones we saw on uh, a different recent planeswalker. Uh, I believe we saw something similar on Mordenkind, and why is Mordenkind and cared about how big our hands were due to draw and made tokens that cared about, you know, size of our hand. Red and Six is the green version of that, caring about our lands. As far as playability, he's incredibly playable, and as for suggestions for how I play him, there's three different types of green signature spells I feel work well with Ren. The first is trample signature spells, because he's going to create you some huge tokens and you want to make sure they get through, and we don't know how many. The second is signature spells that will get us lands and ramp us, since it's 40 something really wants to do is to run more lands in his deck to enable his other abilities. Along that line, there are ramp spells that will make creatures, um, that will make our forests into living creatures, and that's important to keep in mind. Um, do we want to attack with tree folk and build a tree folk centric deck, or do we want to bash him with our lands? And you know, the third type of spell is basically that for more focus. A spell that will bring all of our lands to life for a turn and allow us to beat down all of our opponents with our accrued value. Um, another way I would like to take it, but I don't know if it's any good, is X spells. If you're going to be amassing a huge amount of lands, why not run Hurricane or Stream of Life or run a bunch of Hydras in the deck? Since you know you're going to have the mana, let's make sure we can make use of it. So that's how I look at him for playability. Um, I'm not really going to do a cost analysis in these videos anymore, but I do want to talk about a couple other cards that I think would go good in the rest of the deck. Of course, I would probably run an Abundance of Lands, but I probably also would run Abundance. Instead, we choose land or non-land and reveal cards from our library until we reveal the type of card we're looking for. This can control our draws and make sure we're getting exactly what we need. These are the type of spells I would look out for. Another interesting idea is you can play cards like Greater Good, and they let us sacrifice our creatures to draw cards equal to their power. There is a discard piece to this element, but since Rain will get us cards from our graveyard back to our hand, this card is uniquely perfect for sacrificing our huge tree folk, drawing a bunch of cards, um, discarding a bunch of cards, and getting those cards back later. So those are my thoughts on our new Planeswalker Renin 7 out of Innistrad Midnight Hunt. 
I certainly would like to hear what you guys think and how you guys are going to build around this Planeswalker with your deck since he is brand new and there's not a lot done with him yet. Just want you to know, your Planeswalker Spark lights up my life.